Good morning. Chapter 6, Lesson 7 is on page 284. We're going to be doing general factoring, which is kind of accumulation of chapter 6, Lesson 3, 4, 5, and 6. Kind of throw in a little bit of everything. Let's begin with number 11, 20x cubed minus 4x squared minus 72x. Well, we've never had a cube in our factoring. We've been doing quadratics. So remember one of the premises we had, one of the rules we had before we started factoring is we need to make sure we take something out of the polynomial if we can. And staring at this one, sure enough, looks like we can take out a 4x. And we take out a 4x, leaving us with that first term of 5x squared. The second term will just be a minus 1x. And the last term will be a minus 18. We are factoring out from our polynomial just a simple 4x. So let's stare at this for just a little bit. And we find out that we have ax squared plus bx plus c. Don't forget, we'll worry about the 4x a little bit later. And a turns out to be equal to 5. b turns out to be equal to 1. And c turns out to be equal to minus 18. So let's stick them up there. <laughs> ac turns out to be 5 times a negative 18, or a negative 90. And our b turns out to be 1. So let's think of a couple terms. I'm sorry, b turns out to be a minus 1. Let's put a minus sign right there. Let's see what we can do. We had two terms whose product is negative 90, yet whose sum is a minus 1. I think if we just ponder that one, we end up with a minus 10 and a plus 9. Let's check that minus 10 times a plus 9 is a negative 90 as a product. And if we add the two of them together, we end up with minus 1 as their sum. So we have to place a minus 10x, and we have to place a plus 9x. Remember, upper left goes ax squared, which in our case is going to be the 5x squared. Lower right, we're going to stick in that minus 18. We have to place a minus 10x and a plus 9x. And this time, we have to think for just a little teeny bit. If we're going to place a 5 and an 18, I think we should probably put the minus 10x upper right and plus 9x lower left. If that doesn't work, we can always flip them around as we go through our box. So this is one of those instances where it pays to think just a little bit, what do we have in common with 5? Well, the 5 would go better with the 10, and the 9 would go better with the 18. So let's look at this. We have on one side, we're going to go with a 5x. Remember, 5 is a prime. On the upper left, we're going to go with the x as the other side. So if we have 5x on one side for the upper right uh, box as an area of minus 10x. That other side, by definition, has to be a minus 2. We got an x, and we're going to end up with a plus 9 for the lower left side. And we've got a 9 and a minus 2, and that confirms our area of negative 18. So we have our uh, factors, x minus 2 and 5x plus 9. So let's write those down. So we have our, as our answer, x minus 2, 5x plus 9. Now, don't forget, we have to add this 4x that we had, that we had factored out in the beginning. So let's bring that into our mix and stick that in here as well. So those are the factors. For our polynomial, 2x, 20x cubed minus 4x squared minus 72x. And there they are, 4x x minus 2, and 5x plus 9. Let's try number 39. <clears throat> ah, this one has four terms, and I bet we should probably do something by grouping. Remember, 7, 6 was, I'm sorry, lesson 7 is kind of a collection of everything. So let's move things around. Let's go with a 3x cubed y plus a 3x to the fourth y. Remember, this is a grouping clue minus a 2x squared y squared minus a 2x cubed y squared. And let's take a stare at the first two terms. And I bet we can factor out a 3x cubed y. And if we do that for these first two terms, this one and this one, we end up with 1 plus x. Now let's focus on the second two terms, minus. Let's factor out a 2x squared y squared. And again, interestingly enough, it leaves us with a 1 plus x. We're factoring out a negative 2x squared y. Wow. We can take out the 1 plus x and stick it on the outside. 
And if we do that, then we're left on the inside with a 3x cubed y minus a 2x squared y squared. And if we stare at that for just a second, we have the 1 plus x. And we could even factor out one more piece. We could factor out from each of these two terms an x squared y. And that would leave us with a 3x and a minus 2y. So we had to factor, I think it was, twice something out so we can make this nice and clean. So let's close our parentheses. So let's write our final answer. We end up with 1 plus x, x squared y, and 3x minus 2y. So those are the answers. Those are the factors for our trinomial that we had in the beginning. Let's review this one. It was kind of an interesting one. Let's reorganize, reorder these. 3x cubed y plus 3x to the fourth y. Let's put the 2's together. 2x squared y squared minus 2x cubed y squared. From the first two terms, because this is one of those four things, we could do it by grouping. We could factor out a 3x cubed y, which leaves us with a 1 plus x. We could factor out a 2x squared y squared, which also leaves us with a 1 plus x. So we can factor out that 1 plus x. And we did. We stuck it right over here. We took it on the outside which left us with a 3x cubed y minus 2x squared y squared. And if we stared at that 3x cubed y minus 2x squared y squared, we could see that in common there was an x squared y. We left that 1 plus x on the outside, factored out the x squared y, and that left us with, let's do a different color, that left us with a 3x, one of those, and a 2 and the y. So when we did that, we factored out that x squared y. And we finish up with 1 plus x as a factor, x squared y as a factor, and 3x minus 2y. So there's our answer for number 39. Hang tough. It won't be so bad after we get a little more fluency. Uh, we'll see you guys all tomorrow.